Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911 May 1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. This is going to be an updated video on how to safely handle and operate your 1911 handgun. Um, when I did the original one, I had not been publishing or uploading videos for very long. As with any firearm, whether it be a handgun, a rifle, shotgun, whatever the case may be, the first thing you need to do is ensure it is unloaded and empty and always pointing in a safe direction. Now we have to put warnings like that up, ladies and gentlemen, because there are idiots in the world. And these idiots were prone to shooting themselves, dropping hair dryers in those showers or bathtubs with themselves and electrocuting themselves and drinking shampoo or some other dumbass thing. And so manufacturers and publishers and creators have to put in that warning. Again, empty, eject the magazine, eject the live cartridge, okay? Then ensure by visually looking that the firearm is empty. One of the great features of a 1911 style handgun is this trigger. It is one of its greatest attributes and one of the things that can get you into some serious trouble very quickly because generally they have a very short take up and very light let off. Okay. In other words, the trigger releases the hammer to fall and strike the firing pin, which in turn strikes the cartridge primer and fires the cartridge. Um, so, just like any other firearm, do not trust your mechanical safety. Do simply don't put your damn finger on the trigger, aka your bugger hook on the bang switch, or in this case, lever. On a traditional 1911, all your controls are on the left-hand side of the gun. You have a thumb safety. You have a slide lock. Right here, slide stop. At the rear of the gun, you have a passive tang safety. If you hold the gun correctly, okay, it releases automatically when you grip the gun. A lot of people complain and moan and groan about that. If you simply hold the damn gun in a correct way, okay, it releases that. Newer 1911s with Series 80 operating systems or uh, um, the uh, Smith & Wesson slash Kimber type use uh, the, pay, the, the tank safety is also releases a firing pin block. The Colt version of Series 80 if the, pre the trigger's not pressed, it will not unblock the firing pin. So even if the hammer were to fall and strike the firing pin, it could not move forward and strike the primer firing the gun. Okay? So there's two distinct types. One is tang safety disabled for the firing pin block. And the other is the um, Series 80 type where you have to press the trigger in order to uh, disable that particular safety. The uh, one off the tank safety is known as the Schwartz. Uh, Mr. Schwartz back in the 30s, I want to say it was, invented that for Colt, but they only ran with it for a little bit and apparently decided it was not worth the time and effort and discontinued it until the 80s. And by this time, Glock had started coming into uh, the picture and so forth. And for whatever reason, Colt decided to uh, add the Series 80. Now, the Series 80 is a good idea. Um, because if you were to drop this firearm on its nose, if it has a standard steel firing pin, the weight of the firing pin, depending on the height at which the gun is dropped, if it hits square on the nose of the barrel, the inertia caused by the weight of the firing pin being driven down under the force of uh, gravity and inertia when it comes to that sudden stop can overcome the pressure of the spring and that could fire the gun. So that's the reason for the Series 80 firing pin safety. Um, I don't know if the Schwartz safety is connected with the uh, Tang safety could be overcome uh, to allow that to happen. I just don't know. I would imagine not, but who knows. Um, the 1911, 1911A1 and 
uh, all the clones are single action firearms. Now what does that mean? That means if your hammer is down all the way like that, no matter what you do with the trigger, the gun cannot be made to fire. Okay? It does the the all the trigger does is release the sear or pr move the sear out of the way to release the hammer to fall. That's all it does. It doesn't cock and release the hammer. All it does is release the hammer. So if the hammer is down, you can point it, it can be loaded up with a round in the chamber. If that hammer's down, you cannot get it to fire. Okay? A double action handgun, on the other hand, if the hammer was down, you press the trigger all the way through its long stroke, it would cock the hammer and release the hammer. Okay? But as a single action only, all it does is drop the hammer. All it does is release it so it is allowed to travel forward under its uh, spring pressure, strike the firing pin, fire the gun. Yes, it is a uh, hammer, external hammer fired weapon. This particular model, you have two external safeties. One is passive in nature because just gripping the gun disables that safety. It moves a, there's a rod or a uh, block, a physical block to the movement of the trigger. It will not allow the trigger to be moved. Okay, let's make sure that thumb safety off. It is. Okay. If you press it in, right here, you can fire the gun. If the thumb safety's off. Now, let me cock it. If the thumb safety is on, in the upper position, this is depressed, that blocks it. Okay, so it won't allow it to fire. Bring it down, and this is also pressed in, boom, you can fire the weapon. Again, with the hammers all the way down, you can press the trigger until hell freezes over. It ain't going to do anything because it doesn't cock and release the hammer. It simply releases the hammer. Okay, like every other freaking semi-automatic on the market, just about it, that I know of anyway, you have a slide stop. And what that does on American firearms specifically, especially, we have a long history of it, when the final cartridge is fired, the uh, follower in the magazine pushes up on the slide stop and it stops the slide. So it's a visual indicator when you run out of ammunition, Okay, it's open, it's locked back. That allows you to drop that spent magazine free and out of the way. S snap the next one in and either A, press down on it, releasing the slide, or B, working it that way. Now, because of the way the geometry of the sear and hammer work, releasing the slide on the empty chamber can cause a bounce that can over time damage the sear and uh, eventually make the gun unsafe. Um, Wilson Combat did a video uh, here on YouTube at GoWilsonCombat dot uh, forward slash YouTube. Um, they have really, really fine triggers. We're talking three, three and a half pound triggers. And at a gun show last year, they had people come by and just drop the slide on the empty chamber time and time again. And at the, by the end of the show, the Sears were beat to pieces and it caused it to for the the hammer to follow the slide that's just a bad bad deal all the way around so right, wilson combat and any other uh quality 1911 manufacturer will recommend you never drop the slide and allow it to go under its own weight under its spring tension just to slam shut on an empty chamber um that's one thing second thing do not Take a cartridge and drop down into the chamber and drop the slide on it. I don't care if it has an external spring-loaded uh, extractor or if it has the internal original style extractor. That extractor bouncing up over that that cartridge uh, lip right there for the extractor groove, that will damage your extractor. It will either A, break it, or B, it will spring it out of position to the point it becomes weak and it will not grasp and extract and eject the spent cartridge okay 
So it doesn't matter if it's a Glock or a 1911 or any other gun. They will tell you to load it only from the magazine. Like so. Okay? Do not singly hand load them. Okay, we got that one out. Visually verify it is empty again. So regardless of what type of extractor, regardless of what type of semi-automatic handgun, whether it be a rifle, shotgun, or handgun, load it from the magazine. That's what it's designed, that's how it's designed to feed. Especially in a 1911 because they're controlled feed. The base of the cartridge goes up into the extractor as it's coming off the uh, out of the magazine, okay? It captures that and can, helps control it up into the feed ramp. Some people think it's a great idea, some people don't. But it's one of the one reasons, one of the reasons you can take a 1911, hold it upside down and shoot it all day long and it will control the rounds right into the freaking chamber. Okay? Um, of course that slide's moving so dang gun fast, gravity may not have a chance to pull the cartridge up and out of the way, but it's one of the design features John Moses Browning put into the gun and it works simple as that um let me see what else 1911 i don't know if it actually introduced it or not but it made it very popular for the thumb um released magazine okay you got a magazine release button right here right behind the trigger okay and european handguns used to have the release at the heel of the mag at the heel of the uh the uh, back strap okay you can still see that on some beretta 92s that are not modified for military service in the united states the magazine releases at the heel so it <coughs> takes two hands okay to release the magazine get it out of the way versus 1911 which only takes one and you can easily kick it right out of the damn way if you don't, you don't need to throw it on the ground whatever that's one of the great design features um Back to safeties for a second, I almost forgot to say this. There is something, they call it half cock, but it's not truly. You can see there's that gap right there. That is a shelf, okay? For some reason, if the, the, the tip of the sear broke off or something happened and jar the, the hammer loose, as it would fall, the spring pressure on the sear would push it back in the way and it would fall and stop right there. Okay, even if part of the sear is broken, it would only be chipped or just the tip would be broken off more than likely and what was remaining could catch it. Another thing, the thumb safety. When the thumb safety is applied, it makes a physical block between the trigger or the uh, hammer and the sear. Even if the sear was broken or completely missing, the hammer cannot fall as long as the thumb safety is on. That is another reason they recommend it. Uh, don't take it off until your sights are on your target. Just in case. It's another you got a safety feature and a safe practice working in conjunction to prevent an accidental discharge. It's something you not don't intend to shoot, such as your damn leg. Um sights. When you purchase a handgun, buy sights you can damn see. Okay? If your application may require you to shoot in very dim light, night sights are nice, but the one of the safety rules is do not shoot unless you can identify your target and what is behind it. Just because you can see your sights doesn't mean shit. If you cannot identify your target, how do you know it's not your significant other, your wife, your husband, your children, your neighbor, someone trying to help, a police officer, your, if you're in a military situation, your partner, your uh, comrades in arms, your buddy. So you still need to be able to identify your target. So night sights are great and handy and all that good shit. They're not worth a flip if you cannot see what it is you're trying to shoot at and you accidentally inadvertently kill your friends. Okay? 1911 is an awesome firearm. Most people don't like it nowadays because it's heavy. It's all steel, most of them. Some have an aluminum alloy frame, the commander style. 
and uh, you can have them with a polymer frame not that that's my cup of tea they also make double stack versions um, Remington started reintroducing them and the other day I went to look and I no longer can find them on our website so I don't know if they just decided not to make them after all or what the deal is but um, most people who carry the double stack were doing so in competition now. I mean it only adds one ounce to the actual guns weight but then you throw in another six eight rounds of 45 ball for instance you're adding a lot of weight so a lot of most people don't want them and maybe that's maybe they stop production again um every single modern uh large caliber handgun with the exception right off the top of my head that i can think of being high point has this very similar uh system of delayed blowback uh, not blowback delayed recoil and what what they what they mean by that is the barrel and the slide are locked together for a short amount of travel before the barrel starts dropping down. Watch the watch the barrel hood right here. Okay, right there it starts dropping down out of the way. Okay, that right there the Glock system is much simplified. It's sort of a squared off piece and it rides off the front of the. Uh, the uh, uh, the opening to the, the ejection port here. That's what the barrel and all is locked in. This one has three lugs in it that lock it together. And most of them have a camming surface that was taken from the uh, Browning uh, uh, um, high power, the nine millimeter high power that was made in Belgium. He died working on that. And the only thing he had left to do was the thumb safety on that particular farm and they say that the damn thumb safety is atrocious but it was a double stack nine, nine millimeter the camming surface on the base of the barrel is identical to the camming surfaces you see on your glocks and so forth so it's a more modernized version of this but the thing is is you don't you don't see very many remakes of the browning high power everybody and his brother just about makes a copy of the 1911 because it's just that damn good a gun uh, but that basic principle on moving the barrel down and out of the way of the slide so it can continue to rear and then picking it back up and moving it back in and locking them all together Glock uses that Smith & Wesson uses that everybody uses it now they did away with the swing and link in favor of that camming surface and instead of the three lugs on top of the barrel and inside the slide it just works off the ejection port and it's much simplified takes a whole hell of a lot less machining and so forth but it's the same damn principle now most of your modern handguns do not use a hammer they use a striker which is similar to a bolt action rifle bolt I would I guess because it it just basically pulls this pin back and locks it into place until the trigger releases it but it's all internal in the, the slide alone there's nothing else so you're simplifying the gun's design because the back strap doesn't have to be a tube it doesn't have to have plungers and a spring so that's one two three parts and one more operation where they had to bore that bugger out or two operations because you got a cross pin that holds it in so that's simplify that they don't have tang safeties on most of them even though the new smith and wesson 380 for con deep concealment and nine millimeters they have have a tang safety a lot of people hate that but like i said if you grip the gun right that enact deactivates that that damn tang safety problem is if you got it crooked one way or the other it may not be able to apply but or disengage it but you see that speed bump right there how it sticks out that right there is so it's even easier but you know people don't they think it's archaic design whatever the case may be but that new uh that new shield that they've got from smith and wesson that's exactly what it uses it's reverse instead of pivoting here and pushing in at the bottom it pivots at the bottom and pushes in at the damn top but it's the same principle it's just another safety means um yeah the 1911 is an awesome firearm it works so well um unlike the glock with the ramp barrel which is a great 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 gun i will not knock glock for that they ugly as dog crap but they're still a great gun 
um, but they don't support the case, okay? You can get a 460 Roland Magnum 1911. I don't think I've ever seen a Magnum uh, Glock of any kind because the ramp barrel does not support a high, the uh, rear of the case and they have what they call a Glock bulge where the case is swelling out because it's unsupported by the chamber. Um, it ensures feeding a little barrel a little bit better than the ramp uh, on the uh, the uh, frame such as in a traditional 1911 but like I said because of that you can't use it for magnum rounds it's just not the the damn case will explode it'll swell up and burst eventually blow the damn gun apart if you're trying to shoot magnum rounds now having said that I know they have a 10 millimeter version of a Glock but I don't think that that's using full power full power 10 millimeter because most modern 10 millimeter is not loaded to its original specifications James Yeager did a couple of videos on that and he loves the 10 millimeter and it's truly has a power of a 41 magnum but like I said you can get power of 44 magnum in the 460 Roland in a 1911 size gun and uh, they make a conversion kit but I don't need none of that crap I don't need a damn 10 millimeter I mean it would be nice but that's just more rocking you when you're shooting so just depends on the personality you want a 10 millimeter whatever go for it but if you have a 9 mil, I mean a uh, 1911 just remember you have a very short trigger take up very light trigger you can easily inadvertently shoot fire the gun when you're not ready just by putting your finger on the trigger and not paying attention because it, it'll break so much easier than most handguns. So that's the biggest thing about a 1911. The next thing is just don't drop the damn slide on an empty chamber. I mean, you know, if you're loading a, a cartridge in the chamber, by all means, allow it to do its thing. But if you're not, don't do that. It can damage the sear. But anywho, that's an updated video on uh, how to safely operate a 1911. Not safe, not simply safely for your protection, but for the gun's protection so you have the longevity of it. Learn your system. Each gun, each type of weapon system has its own idiosyncrasies. Um, don't try to shoot lead ammunition. It's designed for ball, which has a copper jacket, okay? Um... Some uh, 1911 speed hollow points better than others. My Colt combat unit, I have not found anything it will not feed um, reliably. And this in here is the same way. It's just, I mean, I guess, it's, you know, it just depends on the, the specific gun. But 1911 is absolutely one of the best handguns ever built. And every single modern semi-automatic, um, which there are some exceptions to the rule, of course, always, but the vast majority of them use a system, a recoil system and so forth, that's directly taken from this gun, and it's uh, it's a little brother the 9mm high power. Okay? Um, yeah, I love a 1911. I named myself and my channel Mac Daddy 1911A1 for a damn reason. It is freaking awesome. But anywho, thank you very much for watching. This is Mac Daddy 1911A1 and his Springfield Armory Range Officer doing this demonstration. Wilson Combat 47D magazines and 230 grain little tiny cans of whoop ass. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all be good.